So I live in Ms. Mendes's district, and and I would like to hear um, a lot more about what your specific plans are, what like your initial goals are for the district. Oh, okay. So um, the first thing that I will, were you here a little bit earlier? No, we were the late ones rattling the door. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so I'll be happy to kind of go over some of those things. Uh, spending time in the district, right, listening to people um, has only reinforced some of the platform that we're already running on. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that we're running on is fair wages, um, affordable health care, um, climate's a really, really important thing. Um, and so, and, it, and it's important to our community. Um, we, I hear it from our youth, I hear it from, from when we're knocking on the doors, all ages. Um, it's something that people are really, really passionate about and they feel a, a, a very strong disconnection between what they're passionate about and what they believe and what's happening in the state house. So the first thing is like listening, right? Spending time listening, knocking on the doors, showing up, um, and, and, and who am I listening to, which is the people of our district, um, and not spending time with uh, corporate, corporate lobbyists. We have all agreed not to accept money from corporate lobbyists. So um, we're committed to listening to, to the people of our community and then um, instituting policies um, that will help bring us forward into a more prosperous um, situation. So some of that has to do with um, environmental policies that we've already been talking about and, and learning about tax policy where the top 1% pay their fair share. We've lost billions of dollars in this state of revenue um, from giving tax breaks to the richest. Um, and so I know that when I'm knocking on the doors and the people in our community who are working two or three jobs to try to make sure that they can pay their mortgage and pay their medical bills, I know that they believe that they shouldn't be carrying the weight of the financial burden of the state on their backs. Um, and so talk, uh, the policies that we're talking about implementing are policies that um, you can see a sigh of relief, actually, when I talk about it with people at the door. So you can see them saying, oh, okay, like, you care about the environment too. You, you care that the, the weight of these unfair wages and these unfair tax um, standards are what that's doing to us. Um, so it's really easy to go ahead and transfer that into the state house because we've already worked on the policies. Like, we're, when we say policies, there are lines on our website, but then we sit around and actually hammer out policies. There are policy papers on our website and there are more to come. So there's a full transparency, which we do not get from our state house, about what our intentions are and what we plan on implementing. It's not a question, it's not a line, it's not um, something that pulls well. It's something that we've heard, we've worked on, and created policies that we plan on implementing and taking those policies and actually making it the law of, their, of our state. So I, I would further like to get a little bit more into the weeds about what kind of policy um, actions that everyone would like to take about like climate change and environmental issues. Yeah, so, um, so, so having a sustainable um, clean energy source, okay, so a completely um, not relying on fossil fuel industry um, is probably like the no-brainer great first move is to kind of go ahead and uh, make that divorce happen immediately. Um, so that that move, and then also there are already people in our state that are currently working on systems to create clean, sustainable energy that we can actually not only create revenue in the state, um, but create energy for our state and then go ahead and sell it to other states. That exists, that model is, exists and we can, we can do that. We can actually lead the country. Um, and, and, and create an example of what it's like to have um, an environmental policy that is effective, that is um, fueling our, um, our, our state, um, both energy and as far as resources. So, um, so yeah, I don't know if that, hopefully that answers your question, but it's, it's, it's completely so, yeah. possibly, uh, possible, but the, the first step would be make that divorce happen with the fossil fuel industry. That was also a question for everybody. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to add on to that a little bit. It's, so one of the nice things is that as co-op um, candidates that we have an opportunity to have a lot of these discussions. And so last night I was sitting in an airport with another co-op candidate and we were just talking about in both of our communities, one of the, the, the large issues that we have is with solar companies coming in and trying to set up large solar farms um, and you know cutting down trees and forests. Uh, and that's a concern in both of our districts. 
So we, what we were able to do, just sitting there in an airport, because we're, you know, we were able to, to work on these issues together, we, we, sat, we said, we're going to sit down, we're going to talk about a plan of what we can do so that maybe we have some type of uniform zoning across the state. Right now, towns are trying to work this out city by city, town by town. There is no uniformity, mm -hmm. so that um, oh, it's leaving a lot of our communities at risk. It's putting our forests at risk, and it's also difficult from an economic perspective in the companies that are trying to come in and do that because there is no uniformity, right? Mm -hmm. So if we can come up with a, a policy statewide about how we need to, how we can bring in the solar infrastructure without impacting our green spaces. Uh, that's something that we can work on as a cooperative together to develop the best policy that will work for our communities across the state. Mm -hmm. And also tapping into what communities already have going on the ground in terms of creating green justice zones, especially in areas like Providence, like putting it on the communities to determine what does it look like to have solar power implemented inside the living structures, the community structures, and the green spaces that already exist. And it's not just like saying it like we are on the ground talking with people at the airport yeah. listening to this is what we have going on in our community this is what we'd like to see in order to have like real environmental justice based on community feedback mm -hmm.